We're continuing with Zen Flesh, Zen Bones, and we're looking at Case 15, Shoun and his mother. As an aside, one of the signs, personally, I feel, of someone who is mature in the world is their ability to relate. Their capacity for relationship, relationship with individuals, with themselves, with groups of people. So this story from Zen Flesh Zen Bones of Sean and his mother is really about relationship. And relationship on the surface is about two people, but really Fundamentally, relationship is about the connection, the wholeness of ourselves. When we are whole, we have the capacity for also being intimate with the whole. So let's see what this story is like. Shoan became a teacher of Soto Zen. When he was still a student, his father passed away leaving him to care for his old mother. Whenever Shoan went to a meditation hall to teach, he always took his mother with him, and since she accompanied him, when he visited a monastery, he could not live with the other monks. So he would build a little house and care for her outside the gates. He would copy sutras, and in this manner receive a few coins for food. When Sean bought fish for his mother, the people would scoff at him, for a monk is not supposed to eat fish. But Sean did not mind. His mother, however, was hurt to see others laughing at her son, and finally she told him, I think I'll become a nun, and I'll be a vegetarian too. She did, and they studied together. Sean was fond of music and was a master of the harp, and his mother also played. On full moon nights, they would play together. One night, a young lady passed by their house and heard music. Deeply touched, she invited Sean to visit her the next evening and play. He accepted the invitation. A few days later, he met the young lady on the street and thanked her for her hospitality. Others laughed at him, he had visited the home of a prostitute, a woman of the streets. One day, Shoan left for a distant temple to deliver a lecture. A few months afterwards, he returned home to find his mother dead. Friends hadn't known how to reach him, so the funeral was then in progress. Shoan walked up to the coffin with his staff, tapped on it, and said, Mother, your son has returned. He answered for his mother, I'm glad you have returned, son. I'm glad too, Shoan responded. Then he announced to the people about him, the funeral ceremony is over, you may bury the body. Interesting story of ancient, ancient China. Ancient China. To have that kind of intimate relationship with a parent is a blessing. So many of us have fractured relationships. So many of us have distrust and disharmony. But to have an intimate, warm, companionable, loving relationship with our progenitors, with our family, is a blessing. In one of the sutras, the Buddha says it's one of the highest blessings is to have that ability to share love in your own family. So here is a, a Zen master. Presumably had a great deal of maturity about him. Took care of his mother. One of the signs that people grow up is they begin to see their parents as human beings. 
They begin to see their parents no longer as some idealized projection, but as another person who has their own process, their own weakness, who sees their parents as an imperfect being, just as they are. So to grow up, to become a a colleague, a friend, to play music with your parent is a, a, a wonderful blessing. So with this, with Sean and his mother, there was obviously a deep rapport, a deep heartfelt connection. And because he did not abandon her for principles or he did not abandon her for um, the rules and regulations of monasteries, but he stayed deeply connected with her. So he obviously was a person of integrity, a person of loving kindness, a person of compassion. So in this second part of the story, someone came and appreciated his music and asked if he would come and play. And he did. Now, this could be taken at many different levels. Here at the monastery, we get invitations to go to different um, senior citizen places to play marimba or to go to farmer's markets to play marimba. We're happy to do that, usually. But it's always an opportunity for connection. It's always an opportunity for relationship. It's always an opportunity to share the Dharma, the Dharma of loving kindness, the Dharma of compassion. So, Shoan went, played music, and shared the Dharma of loving kindness. And the sign of a really mature person is we share that Dharma with anybody we possibly can. Because the seeds of that Dharma, of compassion and loving kindness, the seeds of the Dharma of respect, appreciation, the seeds of the Dharma of being able to see other people as vessels of truth and wisdom. Those seeds can grow. So, he may have been planting seeds. He may have just been being himself, and by being himself, plant seeds. He and his mother had a deep rapport. She passed away. When someone dies, if we look at them as on the outside, they're alive and they're dead. They're moving around, talking, and then they stop breathing, moving, responding. But the one who sees is always alive. So the same one sees people moving around and talking and breathing and doing all those things us living beings do, and the same one sees what is dead. Same one. The view is, the view, the place the view happens from does not change. So, he comes home, and he sees all everybody is doing a funeral, and he knows everything is alive. Everything is alive, because we give life to life. Mother, are you there? Yes. Don't be deceived. Glad you're home. When Sean was an old man, he wrote a poem. Fifty-six years I lived as best I could, making my way in the world. Now the rain has ended, the clouds are clearing, the blue sky has a full moon. Whenever we have a, a ceremony here and there is a Dharma talk or something, at the end, the whole community recites together, beings are numberless, or recites together uh, a dedication. So this community began reciting that dedication, and during the dedication, he passed. 
became still. For 56 years, I lived as best I could. Don't we all, for all however many years we live, live as best we can? Don't we make our way in the world, however we, the multitudinous ways that we try? The rain has ended all those tears, the clouds of confusion, the clouds of doubt, the clouds of despair are all clearing. And the one eye that sees is bright and full, always.